Hi everyone, I'm Mensch, the Community Play Manager for the Studio Lab. Um, in this Rad Lab, I'll be talking about the like our ideas and development behind the different game projects we started. Um, feel free to comment in the Slack as the presentation goes along, but I'll save answering any questions towards the end. Uh, so this past summer, the Studio Lab has focused on developing remote services and events for the Princeton community. Um, one of the projects that me, Cynthia, and Ben, two other workers for the Studio Lab, um, if you remember Ben, he did a Rad Lab on amateur astronomy a few weeks ago, and Cynthia is our Rad Lab coordinator. Um, the three of us ended up on the game initiatives team. So uh, through the work that we did there, we hope to um, we bring the Studio Lab community closer together and to encourage the fun and exploration that comes from games and play in general. Uh, so some of our current initiatives are the following. Um, first, we have Snap and Share Tuesday. Uh, this was inspired by uh, screen sh Screenshot Saturday on Twitter, where game developers uh, share screenshots of their current projects. So each Tuesday, we go ahead and encourage people to share screenshots of games that they're currently playing and tell the rest of us about it. Um, we also have our have the Choose Our Own Adventure channel, um, which a decent number of you are pretty active on, if you are not already familiar with it. Um, the idea is that we would post daily updates on the Slack of a game, and uh, people would vote for the next choice going forward. Uh, and another thing that we do is uh, we create read slash watch slash play collections. Um, they, they are a collection of games, articles, and videos that we put together each month that we then recommend to you. Uh, we've just released the October collection yesterday, so feel free to check that out on the CST website. I'll, I'll show you guys later how to, how to check it out. Um, so the last part of our current projects is our live play events. These are events where we just all get together live, like via Zoom uh, or so, and we play a game together. So uh, like the name Game Initiative suggests, all of our work is tied to games and gaming, right? A lot of my job is uh, finding and playing project. games uh, for these initiatives, which honestly is pretty great uh but like there's more to it than just uh like blindly picking a game and you know deciding that's it uh we have like some specific criteria that we apply for the games that make the cut and these can be different depending on what project we're using it for so one thing that we look for when picking games like no matter which initiative we're using it for is uh, is like how appropriate it is for our audience. Like, is this something that you would recommend to someone you don't know very well, which is uh, kind of everyone currently on our Slack. So there are a lot of people on the Slack and you guys don't necessarily have a lot of consenting power when it comes to the different kinds of things that we promote on the channel, right? Um, so because of that, we have to be conscientious of the kind of material we do share with you guys. Like, we can't, in good conscience, use a game like like Doki Doki Literature Club for our Choose Our Own Adventure channel or recommend it in our Read Watch Play collections because of the sensitive material it, it includes, you know? Um, another thing that we take into consideration is how long it takes uh, to play the game. So uh, say that you have a text-based game that seems perfect for choose our own adventure, right? You might be able to knock it out like on your own uh, in like two hours or so. Uh, but when you consider that we're only voting once a day, those two hours can turn into like three or more months of of like continuous updating on the Slack. So for one, that would get kind of boring after a while. 
and um it also would make it difficult for people who don't who aren't like consistently keeping up with all the updates it makes it kind of hard to just like to easily jump back into the game and to like keep track of where it's going um because of that i like to think that around 30 minutes of game time or like a game with around 30 to 50 turns uh from the beginning to the end is like a good ballpark for the choose our own adventure games uh for the live play we can go for longer games since we're all playing together synchronously but we've uh we try to look for games that are like around an hour or two to um to complete just to be like conscientious of your time um with the read watch play collections i try to include a variety of game links in there so there are some short kind of mindless games if you just want a quick break um and there are also some longer narrative games if you're looking for something um to more seriously play um one criteria that's specific to the collection like to our read watch play collection is that most of the games that I try to look for are either free or relatively cheap. Uh, so a lot of us are still in school, so I try to keep the budget of like of what a college student can reasonably afford in mind. Uh, we realized while developing this initiative that uh, Steam restricts the amount of people you can share your library with. And um, also if there's a game that you want to play, but someone else who has access to the library wants to play the game at the same time, uh, you both, like, you will not be able to play it because that person's already playing it. So, um, so, like, just, just trying to share our Studio Lab Steam library just is not a feasible option. There were other things that we considered, like buying the licenses uh, from the developers and sharing it with people, but that does get more complicated and expensive. Uh, and even then, there's still a pretty strict limit to how many people can access those games. Um, and there was, there's the third option, which was to uh, create uh, these collections without regards to the price tag of the games. But the Studio Lab, uh, like, we tried to be an open environment. Uh, uh, we don't want to be closed off from anyone, and so uh, we want the material we promote to you guys to reflect that. So the focus has been on uh, keeping the games in our watch play collections like free or like pretty cheap. So on the other end for our choose our own adventure games, we also like to consider how easy it is to consider um, to like continue from our last point in the game, kind of like our our save point. Um, we have one person moderate and update the game. Uh, so far for our past two games, that's that's been me. And like, help make sure to not drive that person crazy or to burn out uh, the device that they're using their games on. We try to make sure that the game provides like easy save points or if that's not plausible, then to make sure um, that the game itself is fairly static. So, if you guys were with us for our first game, Seed Ship, um, some of when playing the game, uh, you have to like you have to remember to continue on to the next choice um, in order to save it. Because if you do not and and you fail to reach that uh, save point, um, any other choices you get. Um, from your last save point can be different because each chip is a uh, is a dynamic game uh, and like the situations that you get from it are randomly chosen whereas like the game that we're currently playing in choose our adventure machine of death um it doesn't have easy save points but because it is a text adventure everything is already written out so it doesn't matter quite so much whether or not you've remembered to save like whether or not uh, you can save because you can just like continue, you can just redo the story uh, using the, using what you've already voted on. Uh, for both our choose our own adventure and live play events, we also try to go for games that 
make it easy to be collaborative on. Um, like for the initial live play event that we had last month, we had considered doing Bandersnatch, which is on Netflix. You guys have probably all heard of it. Um, uh, so we found out that Bandersnatch does not work since uh, it has a timer for its options, which makes trying to decide how to move forward between like the four people who tested it, um, it made doing that difficult. So we can only imagine how much more difficult it would have been for even more people. Uh, so that's why that doesn't work for the live play. Um, and it wouldn't have worked for the choose our own adventure, like for other reasons besides uh, besides that, but like the, the timer makes they like the asynchrosity uh, kind of a moot point for choose our own adventure and it's would it would be kind of annoying for the moderators to have to keep going back and forth uh, like like from the start to uh, click on the next choice. Um, another thing that we have to consider for the Choose Our Own Adventure and live play events um, is how easy or like how well the game translates to the format we need for it while also not spoiling the game too much or like uh, staying true to the heart of the game. Um, we had considered the Stanley Parable uh, for both initiatives. If you don't know what Stanley Parable is, it's a game where you play as a dude who's alone in his office building, which you then explore around. There's a narrator telling you what to do. Uh, and you can choose to listen to said narrator or not. Um, since it's a visual exploration game, it would have been more difficult to translate the possibilities you could pursue into a text format. And the act of transcribing what you can do kind of takes away from the sense of exploring, which is the prep, which is like a big premise in the game. Like, it, it kind of spoils the game, you know? Uh, we also figure that having uh, clear-cut choices, like in text adventures, would also make discussing and choosing in the live event easier, um, since chances are a lot of people don't already know each other, and we know how awkward it can be uh, to, like, start debating or just talking to people when you don't know them. Um, plus, it's also easier and faster to decide on an action moving forward if we're given it instead of debating what we can or can't do within the game. Uh, so because of these constraints, a lot of the games we've looked at for both Choose Our Own Adventure and the live play event are text adventures or visual novels. Though, uh, we are also playing around with how well other genres can be adapted to our needs. So uh, when it actually comes to finding these games to test, I usually just browse around the free games tag on itch.io. Um, a decent amount of the games I've like included in the rewatch play collections um, do come from, like I found through itch.io itch as like, as does our current uh, Choose Your Own Adventure game. Uh, I sometimes browse through Steam, look up the different tags for the kinds of games I'm interested in. Um, and just like go through the list until I find a free or cheap game. Uh, I also try to keep in mind the like current popular or trending games and either promote those if they fit um, or look for games similar to current trending ones. Like for this month's uh, rewatch play collection, it's I've included Among Us in there uh, for like some of those reasons. Um, I also just browse through different people or organizations lists of recommended games that relate back to what I'm looking for, whether it's theme wise or genre wise. And it like, it introduces me to a lot of different games or possible games to use for um, all our different projects. Um, so now that you know more about like what goes on into finding and deciding, deciding which game, like which games we promote, I'll talk more in detail about what we've done so far with our current initiatives. So, uh, wait. So I will exit out of this 
presentation uh, first and direct you guys to the CSC website. Uh, so like I'll talk a bit first about like our Read Watch Play collections. Um, if you're curious about how to access the website, uh, it's just through this uh, web address. Uh, the like the page it takes you on uh, details some like some of like what we do, all of our current things. So like besides just our Read Watch Play collections, like you like you have access to our uh, game channels and you have an idea of like what kind of games that we keep in our library, computers, that kind of stuff. So on to the Read Watch Play collections. Um, so, like I mentioned this earlier, uh, but we have recently released our October Rewatch Play collection. Uh, so, for the um, for the Rewatch Play collections, what we try to do, well, or like what we've done so far, is organize the content under a central theme. Uh, for the first collection, uh, Cynthia suggested the theme of pedagogy and play, since that's pretty much what the Studio Lab is all about. Um, the games that we've recommended here uh, deal more with like are more on the educational creative thinking side uh, and a lot of the articles and videos that uh, we recommend um, also really back to gamification education or the ways video games can be helpful in learning. Um, our current collection is centered more around like uh, the different kinds of things that I associate with fall or like more specifically October. Uh, so. So like I included uh, like some horror games and like autonomous games in here and uh, the read watch. So like the articles and videos that I decided to recommend uh, explain further things like why we're so interested, like why we're so interested in horror media, uh, like the role that video that haunted houses play both in video games and in psychology, that kind of thing. Um, when making these collections there's there's like no set way that i've approached it for the first one uh cynthia did a fantastic job in in outlining what the theme was so it was really easy to search for the kinds of media that we wanted for it um i also try to keep in mind like holidays or what the month is uh for when we release that collection, like for example, uh, in May, like May is considered Mental Health Awareness Month. So the so the curation that um, I'm hoping to put together for that month will uh, will will include games that relate uh, that promote uh, greater mental health awareness and the like. Uh, with the second one. Uh, I mean, I have the theme now, Fall into Fall, um, but I didn't have it for a while. A lot of my time was just spent trying to figure out what it should be. Uh, so Brendan, who's our studio lab manager, suggested that um, that I approach uh, this collection by gathering the media first and then uh, and then building the theme based off of that. So. That is what I did. Uh, like I talked about earlier, October makes me think of Halloween and fall, and you see this reflected in the kind of media that I chose. So back to the presentation. Um, as for our uh, Choose Our Own Adventure channel, we're currently playing our second game, Machine of Death. Uh, it's a game where you see how knowing or not knowing how you'll die will affect your choices in life. Um, our first game was, she was Seed Ship, where you play as an AI spaceship looking for a new home planet for the last of humanity. Uh, Seed Ship was chosen as our inaugural game because honestly, it was, was kind of like the perfect game for our channel. You have to thank uh, Ben Israeli for that. Like, it had everything like learning and science and easy decision making and a, dy and a dynamic plot. Um, so, because it's such a great game, we're, we're most likely going to go back go back to it and play it all together again at some point in the future. Oh, no. Uh, at some point in the future. And uh, though that won't be a fit, 
that won't be for a bit. So you're just kind of, you'll have to like stick around a little bit longer to see that. Um, for our current game, I chose Mission of Death since it's it's easy to format onto our channel. And it also seemed appropriate for the Halloween season because, you know, spooky things and death. Um, when, from my experience moderating uh, and like updating these games, it's really interesting seeing what people decide to vote for um, and like how that, how that like is sometimes at odds with what you as the moderator, someone who's like, played these games so many times, like, while betting them, like, it's interesting seeing the, kind of like the divide in thought. Uh, so like, like when we were testing Mission to Death, uh, over the summer, uh, when, like, I was, um, I was the one who was updating it within, uh, like the studio lab employees channel uh when we got to the to the part with the ufo game everyone just kept trying to get the dino plushie and they spent all of our in-game money on that and i was just sitting there wondering why did they do that um but like it's been it brings up like a good question of to what extent the moderator should interfere with the game and how much we should let the players know about the game uh, for the most part, I haven't been too, uh, too hands-on with moderating. I'll, I'll let people, like, play the game as themselves without giving any extra information than what's presented in our choices. Uh, and it's worked out so far, but, like, it's, it'll be interesting to see, uh, if that'll change in the future or not. Um, as for our live play event, uh, we held an experiment for last summer, or no, ah, sorry, last month. Uh, thanks to everyone who participated. If you're watching right now, um, we used to be or not to be, which is a text adventure based off of Hamlet. And we had everyone vote for the different choices, um, in real time via poll. It was fun and we learned some stuff that we'll keep in mind for the next live play event that we do. Like, We've seen, like, we saw that working collaboratively on a narrative single player text game was interesting and doable, but the replayability of the game we found did get repetitive towards the end, and we're not sure if it will be more enjoyable or easier for people to participate in a game that naturally has a multiplayer option. So, uh, because of that, we'll explore uh, with different genres in the future, uh, keeping all this in mind. I'm hoping to organize, uh, like, another live play event for Halloween. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, but, like, some games that I'm considering are Among Us or Werewolf or other social deduction games or anything else, really. Uh, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, so that's it for our current projects. It's been an interesting process to get to the initiatives we have now. So like we've had to scrap some ideas for for like each of these projects before we presented them as they are now to the rest of you guys. So for some of them it was like more like smaller changes and issues like deciding when Snap and Share Tuesday would be and what we would call it. Uh you can guess from the name like what we decided. Uh for other initiatives like the read watch play questions, it was originally going to be a bi-weekly curation of just games. And it was gonna be like a game book club where people would get together at the end of the two weeks and discuss and play the games together. That turned out to be a lot of work on our end and also seemed kind of like homework for people who would be interested in participating, which is what we're not trying to do. Uh, so the time period got extended, uh, but to keep that whole idea of like discussion of games in general and the games that we recommend, uh, we decided to include the articles and, video and videos. And that's how we know, and that's how we have the Read, Watch, Play collections as we do now. Um, the premise of the Choose Our Own Adventure channel and the live play events have stayed pretty much the same 
since their inception, but like most of the changes we've made to them have been more about have been more about the kind of games that we want to use for them as opposed to the to the initiatives themselves. Um, like besides that, we've also had some ideas that we were interested in at the start of the game initiative team, but didn't get fully fleshed out. So these included things like game tournaments and design challenges, game design workshops and talks, um, communal watch parties, things like that. I'm hoping to get more of these ideas fleshed out in the future, though it may not be for a bit. I think some of these ideas might be good for a winter session class or activity, like the design talks or game tournaments, just because we'll have like more time to really participate in those events. Uh, so beyond that, I'm also hoping to uh, try to develop other new projects in the future. Uh, but if you guys have any suggestions or questions about our game initiatives, like feel free to message me on Slack. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Thanks for listening, guys.